process. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Um, well, hello, everyone. My name is Pandora. It's my real name. I didn't change it to be cute or anything. I've had it for 65 years nearly. Um, you may need to direct me. What, what do I do? Just jump in? It's like, um, I usually ask like one question. What okay. made you decide to pick this particular um, recipe to share with us? Uh, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I didn't know this was a thing as far as squash pudding because you did some research and found some different recipes, but my best friend's mother probably about 40 years ago now, you know, when you're um, growing a nice garden and you have that ac excess of yellow squash and it's like, what do we do with it now? <laughs> what do we do with it now? So she, I thought she came up with squash pudding. It's probably a variation, but um, she's my other mother and um, I'd love I love her. I loved her. She's no longer on the planet, but um, I thought what a good homage to, to um, Louise to highlight her squash pudding when with through someone who doesn't cook anymore. So I yeah. thought that was, yeah. I mean, um, I was thinking, oh, this is just yellow cake, but it has squash instead. So I'll, I'll have to see how it is at the end because it seems like it's the same ingredient list that you would do when you make, you know, basically just a cake, except it only has two tablespoons of flour and two cups of yellow squash. Right. So. And that just, that's just to thicken it a bit. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of why I knew it was something I could do and, and sort of a tribute to her. All right. Let's go over the ingredients list and then we'll start cooking. Okay. Um, so when I went to the farmer's market, of course, they have the cute little yellow squashes that you normally see at the store, but they also had the crate of like discount zucchinis that are, you know, as big as your head. And then they had exactly three yellow squash that had not been picked. Usually what happens is they don't pick them like a couple days and they double in size. Right. Yeah. And so not to waste them. And um, I will make a bigger batch because I tend to cook tons. Otherwise, let's see. Um, two cups cooked yellow squash um, drained. I actually last night dreamed that I put the liquid in also. And then it turned into like squash pudding baked soup <laughs> that was like i guess technically kind of a nightmare last night yeah <laughs> and then um let's see it, this is like the the recipe of twos two cupped cooked yellow summer squash two eggs two tablespoons flour two tablespoons butter one teaspoon vanilla one cup cinnamon and then i'm one cup sugar and cinnamon, nutmeg, pinch of salt. And I couldn't find um, nutmeg. I guess I'm out. Um, and when I like to use nutmeg, I tend to use garam masala, except garam masala has black pepper in it. So for some people, that might be weird. That's my, that's my um, pumpkin spice. <laughs> but I also have a little bit of pumpkin spice which is you know a uh, cinnamon ginger nutmeg and allspice so which would work too and i'm going to do something really weird that i've never done before i'm going to put some smoked bacon maple sugar in it Ooh. i actually just had um some it was uh bourbon bacon jam i tasted that so there's there's some weird things out there so there, there are there are yep and so um you could also use uh chinese five spice which um is basically uh the pumpkin pie mix spice from china or you can use seven spice from the middle east which is the you know mix of all of that 
it's just what are your preferred flavor uh, i don't presume that but these are things i like to use when i use cinnamon or nutmeg right I, and and, yeah. and one thing i said in the recipe you decide do you want it to be a savory or sweet you know you decide which direction you go and make it up that's what my husband says about me he says you just throw things together and they work I can't replicate it necessarily, but this is our base. This is our base uh, recipe. Um, now, that being said, how have you made it um, savory? You know, um, I would put more of like a, more like a sage. Um, okay. Um, obviously not the sugar. No. And it just any split. I mean, it's kind of sounds like if you're putting squash and eggs that you're making a baked souffle almost. Right. It's not that light, but um, okay. it's definitely, it's in that genre. Um, and I typically do not um, peel the yellow squash, okay. nor, nor do I seed mine. However, if you have a larger squash, you may want to, you might not want the seeds. It just depends. I like having all that fiber. I guess I also feel if it's like hard as a rock, you might, like you said, peel it. These right. ones are actually still, actually this one's, this one's soft still on the outside. But this one's hard. Oh, this one's hard as a rock. You can, you okay. can maybe hear it. So. You, you may want to do, you may want to do that. Um, yeah. So, and then I got these wonderful eggs. Today I learned, or a few days ago, I learned the difference in the egg sizes are three ounces in weight. Okay. The difference between a medium, a large, it's each one is, you know, each category is three ounces. So that was something I just learned new. So, all right. Um, I'll start cutting, yeah. but put a little water in the pan to cook it. Right. I mean, I, and because I don't um, peel mine, I'm, I'm obviously going to wash these. I got mine at the farmer's market, too, because it's a little late in the season for my yellow squash. So I didn't want to use that which was already cooked and in the freezer. But so I'm gonna, decide, I rarely, I rarely, um, Okay, I'm going to start the heating the water so just so it might speed it up a little bit. Because we're trying to get this squash really mushy, right? Right. And I, I would go ahead and turn the oven on too. Oh, well, might take me a second because I turn off the gas on it. Okay. Well, but anyway, good point. It's just an idea. Yep. Everything's a suggestion, right? Yeah, just like, but so, yeah, I always forget to preheat the oven. So. I'm not, I'm not good at that either. Um, the size of the pieces you, depending on how quickly you want them to cook, um, I tend to go a little bit on the medium side, not too large, not too small. The intention is just to get these cooked. And I don't typically start the water until I get the squash in there, but you know, for the sake of our show, you may be choosing to do things a little differently. So as far as the ingredients, I misread the ingredients list and I didn't see summer squash. I just sort of read it quickly and just saw squash. And so I have already cooked butternut squash which is probably a lot dense oh it'll work well we're going to find out because um <laughs> i i think it would be a nice addition if you had if even if you were to have the, the yellow squash squash lulu uh -huh. the would give it um, a nice flavor too so it'll be interesting to see how it works <laughs> Okay, so um, all I have to do is just, I baked it, and so I just have to take the skins off and and um, 
and then I would be sort of with you guys as far as where I need to be as far as cooking. Okay. Let me think now because whenever we uh, blend this in the blender, let's look at the consistency of it and see what might need to be done to that butter. Um, butter. Yeah. Okay. okay. Make it a little bit. You may have to add some eggs and you may want to whip those eggs a little bit before you put them into the squash to get some airiness and lightness. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm making it up. It sounds good. Um, but that's my hunch. All right. Yeah, I tend to turn my gas stove off in the summer. So I'm not heating the house. Right. But now it's winter, so I guess I can start. And this will cook down a little bit, as you know. So while this is two cups of uncooked, I'm going to add just a little, a little bit more to, uh, to it. And actually, I think I'm, I'm, I may double the recipe. Does that seem, it doesn't seem like it's much? Is it matters how much you want to make? That's right. I always tend to make tons of stuff. I guess if I if we cook too much of this, we can make like a, a nice little super something. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna cut all my squash. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, because then I can put some in like a dressing. Or, oh, you make a dressing with squash? Oh yeah. You just just blend the squash as your base for salad dressing. Oh, not that kind of dressing. Um, uh, stuffing. Oh, like, oh, like a stuffing for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I have a dog down here that would like some squash. <laughs> I'm not sure. She's on a special diet right now. She uh, has kidney stones and. She can't eat the things that she normally likes to eat. So you like squash? She likes just about anything. She's a dachshund. She's like, you eat it. I like it. Yeah, why wouldn't I like it, right? Yeah, it's just like. And Lulu, where are you at in St. Louis, if I may ask? I live in South County by the intersection of um Two um 255 slash 270 and 55. Like are you cooking along, Lulu? I am. Okay. I used to go to Webster Groves for my um healing touch classes. There oh nice. That's like all right. You got yours. I don't think I'm gonna fit more than two of these squash in this pan. Actually, got big ones. they're big. Yeah, and I don't. It's like um, I forget. I want to say it was like a dollar fifty a pound for the little ones, yeah. or like a dollar a piece for the big ones. And so it was like thirty percent of the cost if you get the big ones. Which I'm not looking to see. Like, how are your seeds? Are they? You think that'll be a detriment, or you're okay with? Um, yeah, I think they're you're... still they're not formed enough to actually be a seed. Okay, so you're good. Yep. So I usually just cover this cover the squash with water. Yeah, I like this um, this particular stainless steel pot. The company advertises that as waterless cooking oh yeah so you're kind of if you but i always i still put a little layer of water at the bottom but you can actually steam vegetables in it with like no water well that might work out i have never tried to use that i'm going to try to squeeze this because then you wouldn't have the moisture which is kind of you're working it works against you in this recipe
I solved everything, even if it doesn't say solve. Okay, this one has seeds. This one, this one has thicker skin. It was interesting there of the three, each one of them were distinctly more mature. Huh. Yeah, so this one definitely I have to take the seeds out because they're formed. I see. I don't know that I want to do that. But it's going to take a little bit of time for that to that to cook. And this is I've seen it. I've seen them do like uh zucchini boats, but I've never seen a yellow squash boat. Where they I don't just know why. where they just get it like this and they put stuff in that little curved part and bake it right why why couldn't you do that with this oh. if i'd been thinking i'd probably made some spirals to use later for some spaghetti but i didn't so there we go i yeah all right let me get the compost out now here's the thing well we're not there yet so i won't talk about it yet i mean so how often do you think you used to make this? Or you said you're not much of a cook or? Not anymore. Because it sounds like you said you don't have some of the squash in your freezer. That sounds like somewhat of a cook. I do have it. Yeah, I, well, I say I don't cook. You know, I mean, I used to can like everything and had a big garden and and I guess if I'm going from then to now. So you went from preserving a ton to just cooking normally. Right. Except I did, you know, I did can those tomatoes this summer, which I I forgot how much I loved to can. Yeah. Crazy. I tend to like for tomatoes, I've frozen a lot, uh -huh. and then I tend to cook them in the um, in the winter, so I'm not heating up the whole. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll I'll, you... I'll save a bunch, like freezing them, and then. All right, this butter. I tend to keep my butter in the freezer, so I mean, like, <laughs> need to bring it up to room temperature. All right, and the recipe doesn't say this. You know, I don't well, think, You um, probably don't need it, but I need to be able to actually cut it because right now it's frozen solid, so. Yeah, I like to put some in while my squash is cooking too. Oh, well then, if that's the case, I could probably cut off a frozen chunk. Uh-huh. See, here's the bad thing about the way I cook is um my mother was from the south but don't hold that against her because she she didn't understand she did was not a typical southern person however she would just accidentally forget to tell you things about the recipe um the reason why people really like food from restaurants is they put absolutely tons and tons of butter in everything people don't seem to realize that like I've seen videos of people cooking in the kitchen and they have like this, you know, two gallon vat of butter that they're just putting in everything. Right. And, lot, and lots of salt, lots of salt. Yeah. Um, yeah, Fred, if, I mean, if you prefer ghee or anything like that, it doesn't really matter. Right. Oh. Um, I'm kind of trying to switch this to coconut oil these days too for the... I do have a little bit of ghee on the bottom of this. My, from a past cooking show, this is okay. I'm, I'm saving it. There's just a little bit left on the bottom, and I could use that because if if we're looking for flavor, then I'll just put this this butter back in the freezer. Good okay, idea. it's probably going to take us what maybe about twenty minutes for this to cook down. Let's see. So what can we prepare? Well, I I. Put the oven on to start warming that up. Yep. Um, and, well, I know what I'm going to do, but 
everyone, I sometimes drop in raisins or like your butternut squash. If I had some of that, I would, I might put some of that in there or persimmons mm. um, to add some sweetness. But I have these dates that need to be used. I've never done this before. We're going to try it. I have this, this whole bottle of mixed nuts and raisins. Mm -hmm. And it's, what do you call it? This is my snacking bottle. Um, what do you think would happen with the nuts? I mean, I could imagine putting that on top. Yeah, I probably. I mean, normally you wouldn't put very much nuts in there because they turn mushy. Yeah. But this doesn't have much moisture. I did dry some strawberries and put them in this mix. Okay. All right, my snack time. Well, let's see. You want some dates to add to it, huh? Well, I'm going to try some. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't think it's going to hurt. But, so I, want, I want to Got use it. them for... <laughs> the other day I came across some date honey. Oh. Just, they just basically blended dates with water, right? To make a syrup. Oh man, that was good. Now here's the thing. If for the sweetener. You know, some people will use sugar. Some people are avoiding sugars. They will want honey or, or something like that. And you all know that if you're using honey, you're going to need to reduce the amount a little bit and then beef up the, the dry ingredients somewhat and then reduce your temperature is what I think I remember. Does that sound about right, R? Yeah. It's like... Oh, these are some nice dates. Yeah. Where are these dates from? Tunisia. So currants or raisins or persimmons. We have a pretty decent persimmon tree out here that I like to, if I get there before the deer do. What persimmon is like um, um, papaya of the south? Is that would you agree? Oh, that? I, don't, I don't know. Or mango. Gonna... I forget what, but it's a wild fruit that's grown in the south of the U.S. And it's it's not around for very long, so people get really excited by it. Yeah. But. Will not take as long as. That's what. But what's nice about this recipe is you're basically utilizing, you know, if you have a garden or um, you're utilizing something that normally people tend to throw away because when you get giant squash like that, people don't tend to like to eat them. That's true. You know? So... Now, have you ever made this? You said you wanted to make this really mushy. Have you ever made it where the squash still had a lot of texture? That's a good question. It'd be more like, I don't know, almost like a baked, baked um, breakfast thing. Um, what do they call it? Maybe like a frittata or I don't know. I think what? Or a souffle. What changes is you, you've identified the quality or the texture of the squash is going to change. Putting, you know what? I may have some frozen in the freezer here that I could show you. And again, how do you tend to mush them? Do you run it through a blender or just? Oh, yeah, or an immersion blender. But or I use a blender. Mm -hmm. I have like the potato masher. But I also have immersion blender. Let's see. It does. Um, um, the thing you want to be sure is that that squash is drained really well. Are 
because it matters how much Open from the flower. I, I'd like to try Lulu's compared to ours with butternut squash, huh? I'm sure it'll be much sweeter. So mine. I'm debating on whether to use, I ended up with um, three cups. And I'm debating on whether to use two cups for the pudding and then make a cup of just butternut squash soup <laughs> that's what i'm thinking i'm going to use with my squash here is i'm going to save some you know i don't know i might have to cut some more dates i'm eating them all i know i had to put mine up it's like <clears throat> let me see if i can and or if you want to fo focus it a little more down we're seeing the ceiling a little bit okay I'm calling for reinforcements to bring in some flour. We have a, my mother-in-law lived out in the garage and we have a primitive kitchen out there, but my husband likes to cook out there more than in here. Look at that, mine's um, like, if I'm mushing it right now, it's like halfway cooked already. Did you drain, uh, you wanna drain yeah, you it? you need to drain it or. Oh. yeah. Well, I haven't water. put any water in it. That's just water from it. Okay, yeah. that's all right. But you still would want to drain it. I do. I do okay. think. Okay. Then I'll stop mushing it. Okay. I was getting enthusiastic how cooked it was already. Uh huh. Yours may be more so. All right. But, all right. Maybe what I can do is instead of draining it, I'll just scoop out what I need, and then I'll make the soup in the same pot. Oh. Really? see i have an interesting little uh thing to, to say about the butternut squash when i was researching how to cook it and stuff i had this uh the new best recipe book by uh cooks illustrated they do the test kitchen on pbs and interestingly enough they said the quickest way to cook butternut squash is not to bake it because it probably could take close to an hour it is to uh steam it and the water that you steam it in, they want you to throw the seeds and the string from the center. And this is for butternut squash soup. Then you strain that water that the butternut squash is steamed in. And it's got all this really rich flavor from the seed and the okay. fibers. Yeah, you're not wasting any of that. And you're not, and you're not dirtying another pot or heating up your oven. Uh, I thought that How was- How long does it take to steam it? They said about uh, 30 minutes versus um, I probably roasted this for at least 45. Yeah, I think the I think probably the oven cam comes from commercial application when you're doing a bunch of them. Uh, so, you know, when if you're, the you do like four or the, five or six of them, you can't do that in the I, stovetop. But also the flavor profile is different because it caramelizes in the oven and you don't get that flavor when you steam it or boil it or even saute it. It doesn't quite get that same flavor. So they were trying to up the flavor and that's why they put the seeds and the, the stringy stuff from the center in the water that they were steaming it. So I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. Something to try. I get a note from our cook for next, and he's saying we're going to have to pre cook some stuff. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, it'll be the stuffed shells. And he said, you probably should pre-cook the shells because they're really hot. If you're going to stuff them, you don't really want to be holding hot shells. <laughs> okay. What is next week? I think that's, um, I think it's stuffed shells. Okay. If it's not next week, I just got a message from one of the cooks. So, all right. 
I think my squash is done. You do? I don't know if mine is. I can. Take out. I, I mean, do I want to open it up? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Get a fork. Check. There's a couple of them. Yeah, most of them are done. But Let's see. But it's interesting, like, like I haven't put any water in. It's like 50% water. In there. Wow. Yeah. But. Oh, that was good. I put, like you said, put some butter in there. I could just eat it just like it is right now. <laughs> Same with this, but same with the butternut squash. I've already plowed on some of it. <laughs> so I think, what do you think? Should I just do the original two cup or double it? I think I'll double it. You can double it. Because if we're doing our standard baking pan, it probably needs four cups. Well. Depends. Yeah, this is the size I'm using. So mine's not near as moisture laden as your um, summer squash. It's like peanut butter or thicker. Uh -huh. That's how you yeah. want it. Um, can I go ahead and put this in the blender, though? Start loading up my blender. Yeah, and I think what I'm going to do is these eggs, I'm going to whip them a little bit to get more air into them. Not just put them in the blender itself. I think I'm going to stick with the two cup recipe just to see what I think. All right, so. I'm gonna double it. So four eggs. Yeah, like I say, I'm putting a little bit of air into my eggs so that might make it a little bit fluffier. More like pudding. More like pudding. this would do something that it's not turn this around it does cook down a lot Probably like half as much. Oh, wait, if I pour this hot squash in this eggs, it'll probably cook it. it probably yeah. Will. That was a mistake. Oops. Let me get another bowl. All right, four cups of squash being mushified. Oops. Yeah, that squash really needs to be drained well. Let me drain this again. I, I even ladled it out and it still has a lot of moisture. Yeah. Here I have an idea. 
I gotta mush it a little bit. Yeah, four cups doesn't look that like that much. Oh, that's about what I have in here too. And you're trying to get as much moisture out as possible, right? Right. All right. I'm. There we go. Oh, Lulu, do you want me to spotlight you too? We can see a little different way of doing stuff. Well, I don't have much going on. I got my two cups in my blender. I got my two eggs. I'm about ready to whisk up. All right. So I got the four four cups of squash blended up. Okay. And I got my four eggs whipped up in the separate bowl here. Got too much stuff on my counter, taking up all this space. Sugar. Now I'll put some sugar in it. Or honey, whatever, and some flour. So I'm wondering, should I add anything to this egg, like to make it more custardy? And it's because it's going to get real hard. It's not going to be. Why is pudding? I'm wondering if I should put maybe some half and half or milk or yeah, I I I could support the half and half idea. Let's see. All right. Two eggs, two tablespoons. Let me go down the list. Some if I don't go down the list when there's a recipe, I end up skipping stuff. So all right. So I've got my four cups of squash okay. um i won't pour the eggs in there yet because the, the squash is still hot and it'll probably cook them then four tablespoons of flour that's one thing like i'm a creative cook but when I start doing that with baking, it tends to mess things up. All right. So now where's the butter? And some. I'm gonna put some ghee. I think as far as ghee goes, I might just put half as much because it's pretty strong. Right, because you already had some butter, right? Oh, that's true. I also put some butter when I was cooking. So that's kind of why I like ghee too, is you get the flavor, but you don't get it's I don't know, is it less calorie dense? I don't think so. It's because it's concentrated, but okay. you definitely need a lot less of it. All right, so. <laughs> squash flour butter now i need um vanilla this <laughs> Now the zillion pounds of sugar. Now the zillion pounds of sugar or some version of it. Man, that flour is making me fun. I don't think I'm allergic to flour. But... Well, that's not true. I am gluten sensitive, but it should uh -oh. be making me cough. <laughs> no, that's true. All right. Okay. 
How's yours looking, Lulu? In you go, eggs. Um, so I'm rethinking this because I have a feeling <laughs> my butternut squash is going to be a little sweeter than the summer squash. Oh yeah, barely puts sugar in that. Yeah. So I am gonna probably go for maybe a half a cup of or a quarter of a cup of half and half in the in the two eggs. In That's what I love about this is we we tend to figure out what we got. Yeah. And then we get to compare. Yeah. So yeah. far, do we feel like in the three years we've been cooking, Lulu, have we made anything that we thought was just a complete failure? Um, well, I, I think that's a matter of taste. There were things that I didn't care for the flavor of. I can't remember them now. And then a couple of my baked things turned out like. Oh, yeah. Texture wise, a few baked things came out funny. Yeah, and I'm I'm a not the world's greatest baker. I for some reason I I like cooking better than baking. Um which right. I'd like to embrace baking more because what's nice about baking is you can clean the whole kitchen up, everything starts smelling really good, and voila, you pull this thing out of the oven and you uh, sit and enjoy it. Now while you're Very, cleaning, it's cooking, right? Exactly. So yeah. So cooking sometimes is just a mess. So I drained all the water out of it, but then I added the sugar and look at how liquidy that is. Yeah. And it was like a flour. thick paste. And then and when I perfect. added the sugar. This is this is what mine looks like now. Oh beautiful. Oh, so oh. you don't put the spice you didn't put the spices in it. You're just putting it on top of it. Yeah. Okay. It'll make it easier. Um, I have, oh. Is it, make sure. I think I can add the eggs now. Yeah, I added mine and nothing bad happened. Yeah, I just, I didn't want to do it when it was freshly piled. I'm going to stick this in we'll the oven. scrambled eggs. Can. Yeah. <clears throat> now, are you putting the spices in your egg or just anywhere? Like in the, in the blender? Uh, she's putting it on the top right at the very end. I just put it, yeah. Is but, it okay to blend it in with the pudding or does it matter? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, do you oil the pan or just pour it in? Just pour it in. And oh. then. Um, oh, wait, let me see. I need to set my oven at this. 50 for 45 minutes. And, you know, you have to watch that because I don't know if that's an exact science or not <laughs> well it probably isn't it's based on um how much moisture is in it right you're trying to exactly so the butter doesn't get melted does it huh well you just put the butter in the blender yes but in see our case, squash I, was hot in my case the squash was hot so it melted it really easy uh-huh see the difference so you might want to uh <clears throat> Is a little warm. <clears throat> I guess it would help if I. This almost looks like a thing of cream corn, the whole thing. Uh huh. Oh, and you're putting your dates on top. Oh, did you put them in it? I did. Okay. Let me, now that yeah. I've done it, let me mix it in because they'll probably burn because they're sugary. I actually cooked mine in oh, with the squash. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. That's actually a good idea because then it would like flavor it. It would spread the flavor out. I guess I wasn't clear about that. I guess, you know, my next cooking show is not on the horizon. Or I... <laughs> oh, it's fine. I mean, that's what I like about this show is we're exactly opposite of other cooking shows in that we show experimentation. We show it's not like like right now, if this was one of those fancy cooking shows, I would take this, I put it in the oven, and I'd pull out the baked dish. Right, that's true. Right? That's true. Yeah. And um, like Lulu said, the fun part of baking is um, you put it in the oven, and now you have time to clean up. Um, now, the one thing I always have to remember is set the timer. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good point. And I thought I'd turn my oven on, but guess who hadn't even turned it on? That's hysterical. Uh -oh. Yeah. 
um, that's all right. All right, let me put my. Um, I'm going to use up this pumpkin spice. Okay. Yeah. I don't. What's it? I I think I said before it was in pump in this pumpkin spice, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and allspice. It could be good. I really like ginger, so I think I'll really like this. I might have overdid it, but you'll know you'll know next time, right? <laughs> Just like where's my timer? <laughs> there is go. a next time. Oh, I'll definitely do this again because you get the especially the yellow squash are like the giant ones. I've done zucchini bread before because you can get the giant ones for like they want to get rid of them. Sure. Yeah. The same thing applies with the the yellow giant yellow squash. So that's perfect. All right. Um let's see here. All right. I guess that's it. We're done, except I'm going to make some I'm going to make some squash soup with the other one. Yeah, me too. Um, um, and I, I may I may um, heat some half and half or some heavy cream and whip that up for the top. I've never done that before, but Lulu kind of inspired me thinking about that. that I'll make some, some whipped cream on the top. Mm -hmm. All right. After it's out of the oven. How you doing? So what I did was I melted my butter and I put the two tablespoons of flour in the butter. So it is a little warm. I'll let it cool down a little bit. Or I could uh, temper it with the egg stuff. But see, I was thinking because the butternut, or not the butternut squash, the summer squash, that's probably why you need the flour and the butter is as a thickening agent so yeah yes. i may not need all of this i don't know we'll see That's very true i've had uh butternut squash pudding a uh, native american style and basically it was just you mashed it with some butter you oh. know they called it pudding um oh I, see i forgot to do my timer so he said think like about 45 minutes but probably what check it at like 35 I would, yeah. Yep, all right. But yeah, I've done, um, similarly, we've had uh, persimmon pudding, oh. which is the same thing. You just, you cook it, or you don't even have to cook it. You can just take all the seeds. Persimmons is a pain right, in the butt. You have to take all are. the seeds out. They are. Yeah. And then you just make like a big mash of it. Um, But yeah. It's like I've been to uh, like a fancy Native American dinner and they had butternut squash pudding. I bet that was pretty well. We're going to find out Lulu's. That's what she's making a version of it. So. Um, all right. If you would cook, if you did cook something else, what would you think you'd want to make? Let's see here. I guess we can talk some other time about yeah. it yeah um here's my gum but all right um can you explain like what the texture will be of this coming out it's just like what am i expecting to it's it's somewhat spongy okay it'd be somewhat spongy um everything in it's cooked basically so you just you know, you want it to be able to support itself and stay together. So, I mean, technically I could, how long does it take to fry an egg? 10 minutes? If I wanted to, I could just take it out in 10 minutes and serve it. It'd be very liquidy. It might be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You might but be putting it over I ice. Could, I, could, I could serve it as like, you know, if you had a whole big family and you were in a rush, you could serve it in bowls and... It'd still be pudding. That's true. You know, you could put it in little, the little, what do they call Raymond cups? The, and put uh, it like in. Like a ramekin? Ramekin, thank you. Yep, the little. Uh -huh. um, that might get it done more quickly and then individual servings. Yeah. 
So, um, otherwise, any final words? We can wrap up, and then when we're done, we can we tend to share pictures of our final product. Okay. You know, you could, you know, maybe take a piece out of the and put it on a plate. And so I can can look at yours and sees, oh, yours has a nice form like a cake and mine is like still mushy. (laughs) Also, I I might have spaced out a minute ago, but how do you know when it's done? You shake it or you do a toothpick test or what? It's just the texture. You want it kind of um, fluffy and spongy Okay. where it's holding together. But I don't think you're going to have that problem, Lulu, with with the butternut squash. Yeah. Maybe I think I'm, I might yeah. have the problem because mine was very, very wet. Yeah, it was wet. Even though, like, you know, I scooped it out with a thing with holes in it. Mm-hmm. And then I mashed it with a potato masher. Well, no, then I drained it out of the bowl. Then I smashed it with the potato masher. Then I drained it out of the bowl again. Then I did it with the stick blender, drained it out of the bowl again. And then when I added the sugar, it was completely liquidy. So liquid. Yeah, well, even before I added the eggs to it. Okay. So, but we'll anyway. see. Yeah. So, good deal. All right. All right. I'm going to wrap it up. If you want to stick around, we usually stick around and talk food. But thank you so much for sharing. And I, I just, I love this because utilizing something that you usually, um, well, ends up getting thrown away a lot of times. Right, you're tired of it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's the only true. thing is the amount of sugar in it is just. Oh yeah, that's true. No, it's. But the thing is, is, this recipe looking at it is exactly the same as making a cake, but yeah. instead of two cups of flour, you put two cups of yellow squash. So, I don't know. It's healthier to me than a cake. Well, that's very true. That's very. <laughs> true. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>